all we are trying to portray here is 10 to the power of 50 is a humongous number. It is arbitrary, but you cannot question it because it is so big. Are you with me? Alright, 10 to the power of 50 is a big number. So big you cannot question it. And that is why it is a law, a scientific law. Now, when Michael Denton looked at those, he realized that, and did his studies, it requires 100 proteins to inside one cell to keep it alive. So what are the chances that 100 proteins came together by themselves? It would give a maximum combined probability of 10 to the power of minus 2000 or one chance in 10 to the power of 2000. There's another guy who looked at just not the proteins. Proteins are made up of amino acids. Those are building blocks. So the 100 proteins will require 10,000 amino acids. And peculiarly, the amino acids have right-sided links or left-sided links. In scientific terms, they are called levo or dextro. Left-sided or right-sided links. In nature, we find what is known as racemic mixtures of amino acids. Racemic mixtures means there is equal part of right-handed and left-handed. And no known process, we know of no known process by which we can change that ratio. And yet inside the cell, all the 10,000 amino acids are only left-handed. Same thing with nucleotides, which are the building blocks for the chromosomes inside the nucleus. We need 100,000 nucleotides, and inside the cell, all 100,000 nucleotides have to be only right-handed nucleotides. Otherwise, they won't even link together. What are the chances that these things can come together at the same place, same time, at a spot that is about 2,500 times smaller than the dot at the end of a sentence in a book. The chances are 10 to the power of 33,113. There was Harold Morowitz. He said, let's look at the whole cell, not just the nucleotides the nuclear membrane, the cytoplasm, the nucleus, the mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, everything that you can possibly think of and let us ask ourselves mathematically what are the chances that one cell, that just the material in the one cell could come together. This is his number, 10 to the power of 100 billion. And this is just to bring the material together now that material that has come together must somehow become alive. That is not in these chances. And every molecule in that cell must know what to do. And then that cell must know exactly how to divide so that when it becomes two cells, both the cells are exactly like the parent cell and both are alive. And then those two have to become more complex a hundred cells and a million cells and then you get plant life and then animal life and finally humans like you and me and then somehow into that complex organism must be injected abstract qualities like love and courage and appreciation for beauty are you with me? that list itself is endless. If the list is endless, what are the chances? Statistically, an utter, complete impossibility. So by numbers, the statistical analysis says that the event was much better explained as a supervised event rather than as a random event that occurred by itself. The universe is unlikely, very unlikely, deeply, shockingly unlikely. That's from Discover. So what caused it? What did they say? 
So if it is so unlikely, how did it happen? Here's a book called A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. It's read all over the world and this is their explanation. So what caused the whole universe to begin with? Some quality or thing, we don't know which one it is, quality or thing, that introduced a measure of instability into the nothingness that was. To me, that's not a scientific explanation. First of all, you do not know whether it's a quality or thing. You're just guessing then. Secondly, how can you say there was a quality or thing because there was nothing? Yes, it is a very difficult proposition to sustain an argument there. And how did life start then? It was a singularly hostile environment and yet somehow life got going. Somehow. It's a scientific explanation. Somehow life got going. Some tiny bag of chemicals twitched and became animate. We were on our way. What, these are in uh, layman's terms. But no matter what the scientific terms are, the basic explanation are only this. There is no other explanation. You have to say, somehow, I don't know how, but it happened. But I don't want to ever say that there was a creator. It happened by itself. The difficulties of belief may be great. The absurdities of unbelief are greater. Because you cannot find an explanation while pretending or stating that you have an explanation because science requires that, an explanation and so if you give a whole big explanation and finally say I don't have an explanation it really is not scientific and it's absurd for the simple reason that if it is so unlikely like we saw the discover statement is so unlikely then we can almost call it magic so here is the proposition. The persons who believe that it is a supervised event will tell you that the magic occurred because a magician performed it. And the people on the other side will say, how naive. How can you ever think of that? Magic? By a magician? Come over to my side. My side is magic without even the magician. It becomes absurd. It does. Why the, so why do they want to run away or move away from that? Why would you not want to go there? I really don't know, but there, there are some statements that they have said. Why should God rule and I serve? I don't want there to be a God who would hold me responsible for my immoral lifestyle. That's least trouble as an atheist. For a fruitful public debate, we need to understand evolution's foundation. We need to understand this because ultimately evolution is not about scientific details. Ultimately evolution is about God. This is a very big statement. And it can be challenged. And I would like you to challenge it. And go ahead and see if that statement makes any sense. Because if it is scientific evaluation and scientific details, then I think the first thing we must stand up and say, well, statistically it's impossible. Number one. Spontaneous generation, this is George Wall. I think he was a Nobel laureate, Nobel Prize winning scientist. Way back in 1954, this is what he said, spontaneous generation, meaning by itself, was disproved 100 years ago, but that leads us to only one other conclusion, that of supernatural creation. We cannot accept that on scientific grounds? No, we cannot accept that on philosophical grounds. And therefore we choose to believe the impossible. That life arose spontaneously by chance. It is a choice and everybody is free to make their choice. And that we agree and we accept and we give way to. You are free to choose. But you are not free to say that it is scientifically based. Because it is not scientifically based. The correct scientific basis would say there is a chance that it is a supervised event. I don't want there to be a God, I don't want the universe to be like that. That's a philosophical statement. But it's not scientific, it has to be a philosophical statement. 
So, the conclusion, origin of life by random chance is utterly impossible statistically. The only alternative is supernatural creation by design. There is intelligent design all around us. There must be a creator in existence. This creator should be called God. You don't have to call God because I remember describing this in, in front of a, a university group and they said, why do you want to call God? I don't like that word. I said, fine. And I think it should be fine if you don't want to use the word God. So I said, well, what would you like to use word? Which word would you like to use? And he said, hmm, didn't think about that, but let me see. Why don't we call that a leaf or a twig? I said, that's fine. As long as you remember that the leaf and the twig knows more than you. Because that is the characteristics we have. You don't change the characteristics, you can change the name. Give any name you want. So I will throw that out to you too. Give any name you want. If I call him God, don't fight with me. If you want to call that leaf or a twig, go ahead. But the characteristics are awesome power, giant intellect. That's what we saw. Pan process of the four columns, that is how I did that initial part of my search. You don't have to take it. Do your own. But make all four columns and see how it pans out for you. For me, obviously, the swing of the pendulum was decisively to the side that if I was to use reason, information and logic, I would have to agree that there was something known as a supernatural beyond what we see. Now those numbers, just a little bit of statistics on those, or the uh, uh, response or the consideration of those numbers. Once you reach a place of, you know, 1 is to 10 to the power of 100 billion, then we are talking about impossible versus possible. 